welcome back everybody. Uh, I had to take a short hiatus for a few weeks. I had an incredibly bad flu, but it did give me a great idea. I wanted to show you how to create your own custom shape, specifically a biohazard symbol, something I've been thinking of a lot over the past few weeks, and uh, adding it to a sign that you can throw up on a wall and, and create a little scene for yourself. Uh, and we're going to be creating what you see here. All of the resource images that will be needed, I have provided links below for you to either download for yourself or to uh, find the provider I had used and you can download from them. Uh, well, let's get to it. First, we create a new file at uh, dimensions of 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And we're going to go to the view menu above move downwards. First of all, make sure that snap is selected here. If not, just click on it. Then we're going to go to new guide and for our vertical guide, the position will be 500 pixels. I'm going to go back, create another new guide. I'm going to select for horizontal and the position on that will be 500 pixels. Now let's go open our paths panel here. Make sure our ellipse tool is selected and path is selected up above. And at the crosshairs of the two guides, you know, hover your mouse somewhere over it. Does not have to be absolutely exact, but it helps it snap into place. So what we're going to do is click and drag a circle outwards as we hold down our Shift and Alt key. I'm going to make this circle 400 pixels. Then we're going to take our path selection tool over here and drag that upwards to the top of the guide. Holding down our Alt key, we're going to click our left mouse button and drag as we hold down the Alt key. That will create a copy of this path. We're going to move that to this area over here, snapping it right in between the two guides. And then we're going to do this once more, holding down the Alt key and dragging a circle over to the left side. Now we're going to select these two circles here uh, with our path tool selected. Click and drag a selection box to pick these two circles. And now we're just going to drag them straight upwards until they overlap the top circle a little bit, making sure that it snaps to this center guide here. And move it to about, let's say, here. Click anywhere outside the three circles to deselect the two and only select one now. We'll take the right. Holding down the shift key, we're going to press the left arrow button three times. That will move it over 30 pixels, 10 for each press because you're holding down the shift key. I'm going to do the same to the left circle. Select that. Hold down the shift and press the right arrow three times. Once we have that done, up above, drop down menu for your path operations and select merge shape components. Now we've got our first shape, the beginning of our biohazard symbol here. Click anywhere within the shape. I'm going to drag it down a little bit just to get it a little bit more centered. Somewhere to about there. There is fine. Click outside the shape to deselect. And now pick your ellipse tool once again. And at the crosshairs of your guides, click and drag a circle outwards while holding the Shift and Alt key. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller than they were earlier. So this will be about 325 pixels approximately doesn't have to be exact. I'll go, with, I'll go with 328 here. And up at the path operations above, now open that drop down menu and select subtract from shape. You'll now see on the work path on the right side of the screen we've punched a hole out of the shape with this new circle. We're going to be using that specifically here by grabbing the path selection tool and dragging that upwards along the center guide until the top of it overlaps and surpasses slightly 
the top of our original shape. Just a few pixels over, right about there is fine. Holding down the Alt key, once again, and then left click to drag a copy of a circle out to the bottom right side and put it in about the same position that you see above where it overlaps by a few pixels. About there is fine. And one more time. Alt left click, drag a copy over to the left side. Leave it in about the same mirrored position here. And on the right side of the screen you'll see that now we've punched out the three holes making it look a little bit closer to what we need and to make sure that now we have one shape to work with at the path operations above once again drop down menu merge shape components and we're at this stage right now next thing we want to do is create a circle the circle that seems to appear from behind the ring around the inner three circles so in order to do this what we're going to do is create a new path layer when we're going to select both of these layers here path one and work path and we're going to grab the ellipse tool starting from starting from the center here we're going to click and drag outwards holding the shift and alt key until our circle is approximately this large. Release the mouse. And what we want to do is in the path operations, select combine shapes. Let's make a second circle here. Click and drag outwards holding shift and alt until it's a little bit smaller than the outer circle, giving us a nice ring. About there is fine release the mouse and up above we will choose subtract from shape now clicking on path one so only that layer is selected we're going to select merge shape components okay and now that we have that ring and the path one is selected here press control C to copy that path and select the work path below. Now press Control V. That has just copied from path one and pasted it into the work path. And path operations, drop down menu, merge shape components. Now we have one single shape here. We can delete path one. We don't need that anymore. Back onto our work path. I'm going to select it and move it upwards a little bit. Got to keep that nice and centered about here. Deselecting the path so we can work with a new circle here. Select your ellipse tool. This time we're going to make sure we have subtract from shape selected. And starting from the crosshairs of our guides, do as we've done before. Click and drag outwards, holding shift and alt, so we have a circle about uh, about 75 pixels and then we're going to choose our line tool make sure path is selected and our weight is 30 pixels here from the center you're going to click and drag straight upwards until it passes the curvature right around here I'm going to make one more from the center click and drag to the bottom right holding the shift key to keep it locked into a 45 degree angle until it passes the curvature to about here and our last one same thing click and drag to the left side holding our shift key to about there now from our path operations select merge shape components and we now have our biohazard symbol you can go into your edit menu and select define custom shape now name it anything you would like here I'm going to call it biohazard bio 1a since I've done this a couple of times I don't want to repeat the names but call it anything you like 
and now you have your own custom shape that you can use in uh, the image we're going to use in our next stage here. Let's go to the Layers panel and select our Custom Shape tool. We're going to pick pixels from above. Make sure our foreground color is black. And in the drop-down menu, scroll all the way to the bottom. And at the very end, you will see the custom shape you've created. As you can see, I've done this a couple of times before uh, in preparation for this tutorial here. But uh, select Biohazard 1A, or whatever you've called it. And as you create your custom shape here, hold down the Shift key, of course, to make sure that you keep the uh, dimensions square so that it'll stay in the shape that you created. But once you have that, you can now make it any sort of uh, dimensions that you like. And we're going to be using this shape in the next part of our tutorial. And let's get to that now. All right, first open up the wall background image that has been provided. And uh, let's get our rounded rectangle tool here. Making sure that shape is selected above and our fill is going to be RGB yellow with no stroke. Our radius is four pixels, but that will be adjusted in a little bit here. So let's just first uh, click and drag out our initial shape for the sign here. And we're going to open up our properties panel. Making sure that this link icon is clicked so it will adjust all four corners at the same time here. We're going to select any one of the corners, click and drag it to the right. We're going to increase those pixels to about 120. And this will increase the curve of all four corners of our sign here. Now we're going to add a layer style. So open that up and choose stroke. The size is going to be 50. Our position is inside blend mode normal. Fill type will be color and the color will be white. Okay that. Now we right click on the layer and choose rasterize layer style. And let's add a couple of uh, adjustment layers to this here. First thing we're going to do is go for hue and saturation. Once we have that opened up here, make sure we click this little icon on the bottom here to clip it to just the rounded rectangle. I'm going to lower the saturation down to about negative 40. And let's get one more adjustment layer. We're going to choose curves. And at the top right, we're going to grab that and drag that down a little bit just to uh, take down the brightness some. To about there is fine. And also make sure you click the little icon on here at the bottom so that it is only adjusting our rounded rectangle, which we're going to rename right now. Let's just call that sign. Select the Curves Adjustment layer so that uh, what we do next uh, is brought in right above it. We're going to go to the Rusted Metal uh, image here. Selecting our Move tool, we're going to click on the image and drag it into our background layer. So I'll drop it in over the sign, over the curve adjustments. And first thing we need to do is make it a little bit smaller here. So press Control and T to open up the free transform tool. And then Control 0 in order to zoom out far enough that you can see the entire layer and its bounding box. Holding down the Shift key, grab any one of the corners and drag inwards to decrease its size. And move it over the sign itself. Click the check mark above or press enter to commit the transformation. And press control zero to resize the image to fill your screen again. Now we also want to uh, turn this layer into a clipping mask. We're going to name it first to rusted metal. And hovering our mouse in between 
these two layers here. We're going to hold down the Alt key till we see that symbol and left click in between the two layers and we will clip that to the side. Now with our move tool we can move it around and it only stays above the sign itself. And we're going to keep the rusted bottom here. I'm going to move it around until we find it in a nice place to give the bottom of the sign a heavy rusted look. About here is fine. I want to get rid of some of this extra white on the bottom that came with the rusted metal layer. So we're going to press the down arrow key on the keyboard a few times just to move it a little bit at a time until it's gone. Once we have that in place, we're going to turn the uh, rusted metal. We're going to set it for hard light. Now we want to zoom in a little bit to the sign here. And we're going to choose our custom shape tool here. Making sure shape is selected. The fill. This is going to be RGB red with no stroke. And for the custom shape, we're going to choose the triangle that is an outline here. If you don't have that available at the moment, then open up this panel and choose Shapes. And you will have your triangle there. Choose that. And somewhere towards the bottom of the sign over on the left side, you're going to hold the Shift key, click and drag upwards and to the right until the triangle itself just about reaches the edges of the yellow plane here. Now that we have that, we're going to, once again, from our custom shapes, we're going to choose the biohazard symbol we created earlier. And from the center of the triangle, I'm going to click and hold our Shift and Alt key to create our biohazard symbol. And we can grab our Path Move tool in order to get this in the exact position we want, which that, uh, that looks about fine for me. Now that we have that symbol created, we're going to open up our Text tool. I'm using the font Ebrima Bold, and it's going to be at 36 point left aligned text. I'm going to change the color here to match the, the rest of this symbol. So we're going to, the RGB will be R255, G0, B0. Right, clicking somewhere within the sign here. We're going to add some text. We'll, uh, we'll go with danger press uh, click the check mark to confirm that and we're going to create down at the bottom here now zombies we'll just grab your move tool and uh, move these to the position that you would like them to be in If you need to move both your triangle and your biohazard symbol, just select both layers, keeping the move tool open, and get that in position. Now that we have that done, select your zombies text layer, move down, and while holding the shift key, select shape 1 to select all of those layers. Right click and convert that to smart object. Now we have them all combined in one. And later on, if you feel you need to change any of the text, the shape, the colors, uh, anything like that, you can open up your smart object and adjust each piece individually. But what we're going to do here now is open up the Layer Styles panel and specifically go to Blending Options. Now from here, we want to have the text the red paint of the sign sort of blend in a little bit into the background and fade away with the rust. So in order to do that, we're going to move down and look over the blend if area. 
we're going to concern ourselves with the underlying layer here. So anything underneath this layer is what we're going to be affected by. Hover your mouse over this little triangle tab to the left of this bar and drag it to the right until you get to about 150. And you can see that some of the paint has now faded away and disappeared along with the rust. But we want to blend it a little bit better, give it a little bit more of a fade. So now holding down your Alt key, we'll split this tab into two and make it a much smoother blend. So hold down the Alt key, left click, and drag the split until you get to about 165. Now you see a little bit more has been taken away here. Um, it's a lot more fade around this side, a little bit over the lettering. Now, okay, that. And if you want, you can select the rusted metal layer here and the move tool, and you can continue to move it around until you find it in a position that you really like. Uh, I may keep it exactly where it was before, but I want to show you how this how this adjusts. It looks pretty good. Put this back. Put this back to here. Now that we have that done, I wanted to add a couple of uh, nuances to the sign here. So I'm going to put a couple of bullet holes. In order to do that, I'm going to grab my brush tool, make sure that my foreground color is set to black again. And I'm going to choose the SS bullet holes brush set that I have here, which if you want to follow along, I left the link in the description so you can download this yourself from the provider. And let's choose some bullet holes to play with here. I'll go with uh, this one first. And as I paint directly onto the rusted metal layer, it is also going to affect the paint above, the danger biohazard zombies sign. And it will punch out the bullet holes and get rid of the paint job. It looks like it's been uh, shot up by random people trying to get rid of the zombies around the area. Let's get another bullet hole. It's a little large, so I'm just going to decrease its size. Right about there. And get some bullet holes there, and maybe another set right around here. And I want to add a couple of bolts that will be holding the sign to the wall here. So I want to put the holes in the sign where the bolts will be placed. Uh, let me pick a bullet hole. I think I'll use this one here. And we're going to zoom in to the sign. Let's decrease that brush size here. Keep it strictly within the white of the sign and keep it at the center. I'm going to place a bullet hole right there. And same thing down at the bottom, placing a bullet hole right about here. Now let's create for ourselves a new layer. and choose our polygon tool. Make sure that uh, it is set for pixels. The sides will be five. And somewhere near the center of the bullet hole itself, going to click and drag your shape until it's only a little bit larger than the hole itself, leaving some of the damaged area showing. We're going to do the same thing for the top here. And we're going to add a layer style to this. So let's choose our uh, blending options first. I'm going to drop the fill opacity down to zero. And we're going to add a color overlay. Blend mode normal. 
It's going to be a 50% gray. R129, G129, and NB129. Before we click OK, we're going to add a bevel to this. Inner bevel technique is smooth, depth at 100%, direction up. We're going to change the size of this to okay, 3 pixels. And now we click OK. Right click the layer and rasterize layer style. And now I want to add some of the rust from the sign itself over the, the bolts to, so they don't look so perfect. Give them a little bit of decay as well. So we're going to select our rusted metal layer and press Control J to make a copy of that. I'm going to move it above layer 1 and for the moment change its blend mode to normal. And you see as we've copied this over, the bullet holes have moved with, with the layer here. And we don't want to have a bullet hole over our bolt, over our bullet hole. So what we're going to do is select our move tool, zoom out a little bit, and change the blend mode to darken. And with the move tool, we're going to shift it around until we find the right rusted areas we like over our over our bolts. I think over there is just fine. Yeah, yeah that works for me. And we're going to clip this to the bolts themselves. So holding down your Alt key, hover your mouse in between the two layers, and left click to clip your rust to the bolts themselves. Let's zoom in to take a look at it here. It's OK. And you can also grab the Move tool and continue to move it around more if you wish. I'm going to zoom out. Yes, now this is uh, looking pretty good for me. And with this layer selected, hold down the Shift key and select your Sign layer. Press Control G to put that into a group. It'll just clean up some of the mess, uh, keep these things out of the way, and as you know, if you want to move the sign, you can move every object within it. Well, let's get this out of the way, put this up near the top a little bit. We're going to add, we're going to add a uh, layer style to this group here. We're going to choose Drop Shadow. And for here, we're going to keep the blend mode at multiply and jack the opacity up to about 70%. Angle at 120. Uh, leave distance at 10 pixels, spread 10%, and size 38 pixels. Click OK. Adds a little bit of depth there, makes it look like it's actually standing somewhat on the, uh, on the wall itself here. Now that we have that done, we're going to take the arm. Um, the bloodied arm uh, image. The link is provided below, uh, so you can get it from the provider I got it from, a Sylvie T. Stock over at DeviantArt.com. I've already extracted the arm, and I'm going to grab my Move tool and take that arm into my background and drop it in there, move it towards the corner of the screen to about there, and we're going to add a uh, First thing we're going to do with this here now is create a copy of this layer. Press Control J to make a copy of your arm. And under your filter menu, go down to Other and High Pass. Have the radius set for 5 pixels and click OK. Go to your Image menu, Adjustments, Desaturate. And change the blend mode of this to Hard Light. And now we right click on that layer, merge it down. And we're going to add a drop shadow to this arm as well. I'm going to leave the settings the same here. Just click OK. 
Now we want to bring everything together into its own layer. So hold down the Shift, Control, Alt, and E keys to bring everything into its own composite layer. All right, and with this composite layer, uh, we're going to add a curves adjustment layer to this. And under the presets, we're going to choose strong contrast. And we want to lower some of the contrast around the sign itself here. So with the mask for this curves layer uh, selected here, I'm going to grab our brush tool, make sure we have a large soft brush, and that our foreground color is set to black. And we're going to paint out a lot of this harshness on the sign itself, getting rid of that uh, very bright yellow and red look that was given. Let's create another another composite layer here. So hold down Shift, Control, Alt, and E. Create another composite. We're going to go to the Image menu, Adjustments, and desaturate this. Now under the Filter menu, let's go back to Other and High Pass. I'm going to lower the radius of this down to 3. Click OK. And let's, uh, let's set the blend mode to let's set the blend mode to uh, let's see hard light. I like hard light here for this. And you can see around the entire image, it gives it a lot more grit, a little bit more grunge to it. Let's create another composite. Set the blend mode of this to multiply. Let's create a mask for this with our brush tool now. We're going to brush out a lot of the center of the image here, keeping the darkened edges like a vignette. And I want to add a little bit more darkness. So I'm going to create a new layer with the same large soft brush. Now we can just randomly paint some darkness around the edges, sometimes creeping in a little bit more. It doesn't have to be uniform or perfect. Keep it nice, loose, and organic here. and drop the opacity of this layer down to about 70%. And with that, you're finished. You now have your new uh, Danger Zombie sign with your custom biohazard symbol shape. I um, want to thank you for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I look forward to seeing you next time.